Article 29. As we look forward to the uh, lunchtime break, we'll go no later than 1230. Uh, so let's see um, how many articles we can get through between now and then. Article 29, shall the Town of Hampton vote to establish a sidewalk and Americans with Disabilities Improvement Capital Reserve Fund under the provisions of RSA 35 for the purpose of estimating, designing, building, building new, replacing and improving sidewalks in either concrete or asphalt, depending on location, signage and illuminated crosswalk infrastructure, including accessibility pursuant to the Americans Disabilities Act, and to raise and appropriate the sum of $100,000 to go into said capital reserve fund and appoint the Board of Selectmen as agents to expend from said fund. Further, to authorize the Board of Selectmen to apply for, accept, and expend any federal, state, or local grants and funds for the purposes of estimating, designing, building new, replacing, and improving sidewalk signage and illuminated crosswalk infrastructure, including improving accessibility pursuant to the Americans with Disabilities Act, with said grants and funds to be added to the Capital Reserve Fund created hereunder. Majority vote required, recommended by the Board of Selectmen for. 01, not recommended by the Budget Committee 080. Fiscal impact note from the Finance Department, the estimated 2019 tax impact on $100,000 is 3.0 cents per thousand dollars evaluation. Is there a motion to open discussion on Article 29? Moved by Mr. Bridal, is there a second? Seconded by Mr. Waddell. Uh, Mr. Jacobs, would you like to be heard on Article 29? I would, thank you. Uh, for the record, Chris Jacobs. Um, this is uh, another initiative, along with the street lighting uh, type of initiative, that uh, the department's trying to embrace, We're trying to move forward. Um, of critical nature is that around town we are deficient um, with respect to our ADA uh, requirements, meaning accessibility to sidewalks for people with disabilities. Um, Along with that, I've noticed that there's been, in the past, a number of articles trying to move various sidewalks forward. Sidewalks in themselves, are, from a project management perspective, uh, don't stand up very well, meaning that <clears throat> there's very few contractors that are interested in coming out and doing some sidewalk improvements for us for the twenty-five or $30,000 that we currently have in the budget. I think the Budget line is actually 26,000. So the intent is to have this $100,000 capital reserve fund uh, available to the department at the discretion of the Board of Selectmen that as we tackle various streets, like for instance, we're on Ann's Lane now, is where we've gone below and we've taken care of the sewer and we've done the drainage and the paving, that the other portion that always needs to address and seems to get the short stick is the sidewalks. So this particular fund would uh, allow us to uh, access these funds to be used in conjunction with other department funds, other resources, including um, our pavement grant money, uh, to get a much better project done, a complete project done, um, do it all at the same time rather than nickel and diamond or coming back later on and digging up new pavement, which I hate to do. The other reason for this particular article was I was asked to be on the review committee for uh, each year there's grant money available through New Hampshire Department of Transportation. Um, a portion of the gas tax money is always set aside for two programs called the TAP grant program and the TIGER grant program. Uh, these are funds that the schools have even applied for and used in the past to make improvements to sidewalks around the schools. It was interesting to see the rating process and what allowed certain communities to actually get money and other communities not to be eligible for money is they had previously committed through th a program like this, having a capital reserve plan in place to show that they already had matching money. So if 10% match was required from the grant, they always said, nope, we've already got it, it's right here. And other communities would say, well, we'll put together a Warren article, we'll think about it. Well, when they, um, the people through DOT and Rockingham uh, planning look at these particular projects, they want to make sure that they have a really uh, po good chance of getting done. And if a community has already stepped up and A has a sidewalk plan and inventory, which I do, it's right here, multiple pages, and we've rated our sidewalks, we know which ones we want to do, we know which projects are come up forward, 
those types of monies then become available to us. Right now, um, the way our department is set up and the way our funding is set up, we wouldn't. We'd continually rate way too low because we're, we're never ready to actually pull the trigger on a particular project. So in response to ADA concerns and in response to the community's request for sidewalks and in trying to be available to get your grant money to offset the cost of these projects, that's the reason why we drew up and came, brought this particular warrant, Article 4, to the board. And thankfully, you know, the board has uh, uh, selected or, or uh, supported the project. I don't want people to think when it says not recommended by the Municipal Budget Committee that um, they're against sidewalks. And, and I don't think they are, and they can speak for various reasons why they, they voted for it. I heard one person say, well, you really need 500,000. I said, yeah, but I don't want to choke the horse. Let's start with 100,000. Let's just show some commitment. Uh, it's worked with the road improvement bonding or capital reserve fund that we do 300K every year. Let's start with 100K and see where we can move. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jacobs. Anyone else wishing to be heard on Article 29? Mr. Rice. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Fred Rice, 15 Heather Lane. Um, I think that everybody has always been aware of the fact that uh, ADA compliant sidewalks and other facilities are important. But I hope that nobody else, that as few as people as possible, uh, have to go through learning as suddenly and as, as, and as abruptly as I and my family have over the last year just how important these are. Uh, the, the transitions uh, from sidewalks uh, onto the street are things that can make an absolute, a huge difference in an individual's ability to go from place one to place two, uh, to get in and out of buildings and so forth. Um, I'm absolutely amazed that you get a zero to eight vote from any board that would tend to deprive people of accessibility within their own community. And I think that the Budget Committee ought to be ashamed of itself, whether they like or don't like sidewalks. They ought to be ashamed of themselves for voting against somebody, something that would give people more accessibility within their own community. Uh, so I'm very much in favor of this. I do, however, Mr. Moderator, if I may ask, I'd like to ask a question, and, and if you could uh, uh, see who might uh, be able to, to uh, answer it, either the Public Works Director or whoever else. Um, this initial amount that goes in there, uh, is there a plan in place or, uh, on how much this would accomplish during the first year? And what is the expectation of the amount of money that would be um, raised through the grant programs and other means in future years? And how much would that keep taking care of? Uh, would uh, Mr. Welch or Mr. Jacobs or Ms. Hale wish to address uh, the question about how much of the $100,000 would be used in year one if the article were Approved. This is a question that uh, could have much debate um, as far as what would be done because again this is something that we would present to the board uh, as far as any ideas that come forward. Our goal is to look at how we can get, as Chris said, the best bang for our buck. Um, doing two ramps here, two ramps there uh, certainly isn't making us all ADA accessible but getting us the start. Um, we also don't want to uh, put the cart before the horse. The idea that this is a capital reserve fund should also mean that we're building it for bigger and better things and much better use of the money. Um, so to say um, all of it will be spent in year one, I think would be foolish. Um, to say parts of it in our most desired areas um, that need immediate attention, yes, some of it could be used, but with an ultimate long-term goal according to our sidewalk plan of actually uh, building these funds up so that we can get more done for a better price. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to be heard on Article 29? Mr. Jones. You know, I looked at the uh, CIP plan for the sidewalks. They sent us an Excel spreadsheet on this. And the sidewalks they have plugged in for 2019 totals up to $100,000. So if they effectuate the plan they have for 2019, there'll be zero money left in this so-called reserve fund. 
I'm not ashamed of the Budget Committee's vote, though some might think I should be. I'm not because we went into the details of some of the nuances of how we're doing this. I was actually an early advocate some years ago of setting up a separate fund. Because I inquired uh, to Jen at one of our budget committee meetings a couple of years ago, just how much money are we talking about to only repair our existing sidewalks? And I believe the number was like 10, 12 million dollars, something like that. Quite a lot of money. Two mil? Okay. There you go. Reconstruction, 10 to 12 million. Repair existing, 2 million is what I'm hearing, right? And so I think we ought to have some sort of plan on how to, work, how to put all of our sidewalks into a good state of repair, particularly before we start considering building new sidewalks. I also took note, and I think the Budget Committee did as well, that last year there was a a half a million dollar Mace Road sidewalk, a new sidewalk. That was a separate one article that was voted down. Yet on the CIP plan from the DPW, the Mace Road sidewalk is there, even though the voters voted it down. So the process of who gets what seems to be kind of uh, squishy, shall we say? Anyway, I think those are the main themes as to why the Budget Committee was reticent. There were also concerns about why do we need intra-year spending, that is to say, the Board of Selectmen having um, the sole agency to expend money from this fund. Typically, the town meeting uh, plays that role. I see no reason, and neither the Budget Committee, that we had to do something intra-year to cause the Selectmen and not you, the voters, to vote on expenditures as we do other funds. So these are some of the main reasons the Budget Committee voted no way, Jose. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Anyone else wishing to be heard on Article 29? Mr. Waddell. Jim Ward, L190, Kings Highway. I just recommend that people do their homework on this issue because there are a lot of towns where the feds have stepped in and said, your sidewalks are not compliant, do the whole town. And without choice, take out a bond and do the whole thing. So it's not, it's not only if you're redoing something that you have to make them compliant, they can come in and tell you that it must be compliant. So I just recommend that people do their homework and just Google sidewalks and ADA, and it would be financially more prudent to have a plan in effect that would help us if that came to be. Thank you, Mr. Rodell. Anyone else wishing to be heard on Article 29? Seeing none, uh, Article 29 will appear on the ballot as printed.